Pwes lang. So, I welcome you all for today's session on Spark Streaming. So, before going into Spark Streaming, first we'll just brush up what is Spark. Can I have the next slide? So, Spark. So, Apache Spark is one of the fast and general purpose cluster computing system. We all know that the major difference between the Spark and the Hadoop MapReduce is that in Spark, your MapReduce process will be stored in a temporary buffer memory and then when again when you try to run a mapper, it takes data from that buffer memory. But the thing is, there is a small disadvantage with our normal Spark that you cannot use Spark, you cannot use Spark for your dynamic data. In case if your data is keep on changing in a regular interval of time, you won't be able to use the previous map produce process that is saved in your buffer memory. So for that, we go for Spark Streaming. So Spark Streaming helps you to process or it helps you to modify live streaming of data. Live streaming of data can be taken from any of your uh, so data sources like Flume or Twitter. Flume is one where your it keeps accumulating large amount of log data. So, for example, you take your log data from Flume and Spark Streaming helps you to process that in a more efficient manner. Next. So, this is how the internal flow takes place. Okay. So, for example, the input data stream. Input data stream can be from any of your data sources. So, your data source can be of, say for example, let's consider Flume. Flume okay. So, from Flume, you are going to take your input data. So, when you give that to Spark Streaming, so when you give the data to, when you process the data into Spark Streaming, what you will be getting is, you will be getting some batches of processed data. This you call it as batches. So, and then again, when you give that processed batches of data into your Spark engine, you get your desired data. That is your desired processed data. So, what happens is, what is batching process? Batching process is nothing but your data source your input continuous live streaming data source will be splitted into small small chunks okay so your continuous streaming of data will be splitted into small small chunks of data okay so this is how your data is getting converted this small chunk is nothing but rdd resilient distributed data set So, it gets converted into RDDs. So, RDD, your batches is nothing but is just a collection of RDDs, collection of stream of RDDs. Okay? So, this is how it happens. Next slide. So, you mean to say that the real time data is being converted into batch data, so, yeah. and processed normally as is done in Hadoop. No, not like the normal process won't be taking place. What uh, happens except is... Except that mapping, mapper thing, except yeah. that mapper thing, uh, what I'm asking is, usually in a Hadoop we use this batch processing thing only, like yes. the already stored data is being used to, uh, it's been analyzed, uh, mapped and reduced those things that happen. If it's Spark streaming, we use real-time data, so uh, the real-time data is being processed using this process, like converting the real-time data into batch data, yeah. like pre-stored data, it, ma it makes the sense like it's pre-stored data, then the normal process takes place, right? No, not the exact the normal process would be taking place. The process will be different. Like different from sense, uh, yeah. as you said, uh, that, uh, uh, cache memory thing. Yeah, I'll just tell you where the exact different lines. Yeah. Okay, next slide. Okay, so as I already said, these streams can be created. Okay, this is what it call this stream of data. We call it as data stream, right? So this stream of data is called as D stream. Okay, so your live stream of data is converted into D streams. Okay, so D streams is nothing but collection of 
the stream of RDDs, not collection. To be precise, it is called as stream of RDDs. Okay, so small small data blocks. Okay, so this is how your D stream is obtained. Okay. Collection in the sense all the data sources will be collected all together. That uh, small yeah. small chunk. Your and live data will source be... will be converted into D streams. We will process only this D streams. We won't be processing the live data source. Okay. Okay. I'll just give you a real time scenario. Like I'll just show you the difference how it is being processed in Hadoop uh, map. We will be splitting the chunks in the sense. What will be the size of each and every ch chunks? Yeah, that can be defined. All uh, everything will be written. Uh, what happens is. Uh, like your there is a uh, like what happens is you can read, write a program either in Scala or in Java. Okay, so what happens is you have to just uh, as soon as uh, like your data source will be coming and it will be stored in your HDFS cluster, right? So that will be your source. Okay. So for example, your source file is like IAC. Okay. So IAC is your source directory where all your data, that is your log data, is stored. So what you will do is in Spark, you will be calling your inbuilt function. Okay, the inbuilt function will be written either in Java or in Scala. So what the function will do is it will take this IAC as the input parameter for that particular function. And what it will do is it will convert the entire data that is available. That is your Hadoop data is nothing but lines of data. Mm. Okay. Just it will be lines and lines of data. So what it will do is it will convert this particular uh, data that is available in this IAC folder into your D stream. It will first convert the entire data that is available in this particular folder. So this folder will be passed as an argument for that particular function. When you call that function, a function call will be made. So yeah, there will be an API, Spark API, where you will be manually calling the uh, calling the writing the functions and you will be calling it. So those functions are nothing but inbuilt functions. So when you call that particular inbuilt function with the help of this, by passing this particular folder as argument, it will process this particular folder and it will give you the resultant D streams. Okay. So your input data will be first converted into your D stream. So this process can be continuous. So you are using a function. For the function, the parameter is to be passed is the data source. Source data. So okay. Yes. So the function will be taken off of uh, make, making the hmm. uh, Bulk, bulk data into yeah. a stream of D stream, yeah, D stream, and then you can uh, make some other changes or whatever you want into this D stream, and you can get your desired results. Okay, I'll just tell you a real time uh, scenario where you can understand like uh, even more than. Okay. okay, so what is RDDs? So RDD, the main property of RDD is it is only read only file. Okay, so, so RDDs are only read only. So read only in the sense is you cannot make any further changes after this. Once your D stream is obtained, you cannot go and rewrite the data that is present in the RDD. Once it is created as an RDD, you can just perform some operations on that. But the thing is you can't change the data that is written in that RDD. Okay, okay that is the difference between rewriting the data and performing some operations on that particular RDD. And one more thing is, say for example, Initially, you have lines, right? What is RDD again? RDD is just the resilient distributed data set. It is a collection, like your D stream is nothing but your collection of RDDs. Okay, what is RDD? Yeah, RDD is nothing but your small, small chunks. I told you, right? Your no, live data. Please just uh, say it again. That's what I mean. Yeah, that's what. Your uh, live data source, it, once it is processed, that is processed in the sense after calling the particular function, what it will be done is, your live data source will be split into small, 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 small data blocks. Okay. In data is in data sets. Yeah, like yeah subjects, data sets. Subjects, yeah, subjects data. Sets. Okay. yeah, they like are nothing but splitting. Yeah, yeah splitting okay. data sets. So that small, that individual small one block of data set, we call it here as RDDs. That is resilient distributed data set. And stream of RDDs. There is a difference between collection and stream. Collection is just a random collection, but stream, stream has is, a flow. it has a flow. So your stream of data RDDs are called as D streams. Okay. And you can obtain multiple D streams. Say for example, initially you, you are just going to give some lines. Okay, Your lines will be converted into your lines D stream. Okay. So your input is your raw lines, collection of lines, and you will be obtaining some 
line D stream. For just naming convention, I'm just giving naming it as line D stream. So what you can do is there is a particular operation called transformation. Okay, transformation will be done. So transformation is nothing but operation. Say for example, it is nothing but an operation that is done on the D stream in order to obtain another D stream. Okay. Okay. So you will be able to like get subsequent D streams out of your original D stream. So again, the transformation another function, right? Yeah. This is this is just you will be you will be calling some multiple functions. Okay. Or like a functional call will be made with the help of this particular D stream as a unit. Okay. okay. So first, let me like uh, transformation in the sense how will it get transformed? Yes. That's our desire. Yeah. Just go to the next slide. Next, next, next slide. Next. 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 Yeah. Uh, like initially, like what it can be done is initially you will have a D stream, right? How your D stream will be done? Uh, like it will be there is, for example, I told you this is a line D stream. That is your input, right? So what happens is when your line, your line raw data is given and it is processed as line D stream. Okay. So how your line D stream will be looking like this, like this. For example. In how on what basis this splitting takes place? It will be taking place based upon the time interval. For example, for time zero to one, okay, this will be your D stream. Okay, then again time one to zero, sorry one uh, one to two, this will be another D stream. Similarly and so on. So this is how your D stream gets generated, okay? And moreover, so this is how it will be, right? And you will be getting some D streams based upon this, okay? So what happens is, I said transformation. Transformation is the process that helps you to obtain a new D stream from the existing D stream. So how the existing D stream will be created is, for example, for time zero to one, it will create a its relevant D stream after the transformation process. Similarly for time 1 to 2 and here 2 to 3. So this makes, this is a great advantage in Spark. How in the sense is, in case if this particular D stream is lost for you. So this D stream is obtained from this, right? In conventional normal Hadoop uh, map reduce, what happens is whenever a resultant map, like you are just uh, say for example, out of like four files, you will be using four files and you are deriving like three files, okay? From four files, one, two, three, and four, you are just deriving another file, okay? Another two files, say five and six, okay? So when this one particular file is lost, you need to again uh, go from the beginning. You need to use all the four files and again you have to compute it and then only you will be able to obtain your fifth and sixth file, right? But here, in case if you lose this particular RGD alone, what can be done is you can just run the particular transformation operation for this particular time period alone and you will be able to get back your lost RGD. Yeah, that's obvious because in that case the five and six files are a combination of all the four files. Here, the, uh, the D stream corresponding to the time and one to two is only the particular two, one, one and two. So yeah. Works. Like the thing is, we are going to just perform only one kind of operation over the RDD. Yeah, one kind of operation, yeah. but this is how can you compare, compare this one with the Hadoop? That's a mapping operation, right? Yeah. When it comes into the, the real time, okay, yeah, first I'll get into the, the real time. Yeah, I'll just come into the real time scenario so that you will be able to understand this. See, in real time scenario, what happens is, say, uh, just go to the last slide. There will be an image filter. Just open the image filter. So, I want to research so this. Download, download the image filter. This is then in your mail only. Put the mail. 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 Send it. Yeah. First one. Is it Hmm. 
the steward. Okay. <clears throat> this is how like the Spark workflow. Just consider a web service is just having some errors. Okay. Okay, your web service is experiencing some errors. Okay, so your <coughs> so what happens is like your uh, okay, your web service is like experiencing some errors. So your you will be like having some terabytes of log data, and you don't know where the exact error has occurred. So you need to process that, right? So what happens is in Spark streaming, what we do is your input log file will be taken. Okay. So your input log files, it's, it's nothing but your lines of data. So what happens is first we will be generating lines. This is nothing but these streams. So you all can understand what a D stream is. D stream is nothing but a stream of RDDs, right? So it is nothing but stream of RDDs. So initially, what we will be having is we will be input, we will be giving the input as nothing but your raw lines of data from your Hadoop cluster. Okay. So that is converted into lines D stream. Okay. So from lines D stream, what we do is we just perform a filter operation that that filter is one kind of transformation process okay so what we do is we just filter it out so when we filter it out you will just so your what on what basis you will filter is you will just filter the d stream that has only the name called error okay so you will be getting a new d stream okay this is your E D stream. Okay, this is since it is line D stream, we can call it as L D stream. And after performing the filter transformation, you will be getting a D E stream. And what again you can do is you just need to identify one particular type of error. Say for example, that error is like HDFS error. So again you can perform a filter operation. Just another transformation. So here you will be getting as okay, HDFS error. Okay, this is an another D stream. So this is H E D stream. Okay, so next what happens is that is how the functional goes. First error dot filter. So what you are going to do is that is I am just speaking about the second time, second stage of filtering. So error dot filter, what you are going to do is you are going to filter the error that contains HDFS. Okay. So with that, what happens is your you are just filtered and you have kept your raw data your data for ready for processing. That is ready for some action to be performed on that data. Next is nothing but your mapping operation. Mapping operation is similar to the mapper operation that takes place in your Hadoop environment. So map. So what you are going to map is, say for example, your data will be like how your data will be like. It will be in the form of multiple columns, right? So let us assume that all the files are tab separated files. Okay. So between each and every column, you will have a tab space. Just for assumption, just considering that this log file is of that format. Okay. So your third column is your time column okay your time field so what you are going to do is you are going to just analyze you are just going to take out this time alone that is this is how you will be querying like in your uh, <coughs> mapper like you will be just wanting only the time at which the error has occurred so you will be querying based on that so similarly you are going to do the query here so what it will be is it will be just splitting only the third column that is separated by a tab okay till this you will be just done with the mapper operation. So reduce, 
So reduce is nothing but the operation that is performed on the mapped data in your HDFS cluster. Similarly, in like in uh, uh, what is it? In Spark, you have uh, we call it as actions. Actions are nothing but some of the uh, action is uh, action is the operation that is performed on the D stream to get a result output. And you, what you can do is you can either store the output or you can just display the output or else you can store that particular output to your permanent storage device. That is you can just send the output to your permanent storage device. So now what you are going to do is collect is one kind of action. So what collect will do is it will just take out this particular time field alone and it will just put it in a like it will just collect this entire file it will just collect this third column alone and it will put it will give you in a separate output like your time field alone will be you will be getting only your time field okay this is how it is done okay so your time field alone you will be getting it okay this is a normal workflow okay now i will tell you how it is differing from your or uh, like the normal HDFS, okay? Like in our DAISY team, what they are doing in regularly like, they will be getting a, like they will be getting huge logs of data, okay? So how their log file will be is like, it will be just having site ID and it will be having the site name, browser ID, and it will just have a session ID, and it will have a page views. Page views is nothing but like this is a real time scenario. So how your page view will be is. Your page view will be a collection of like clicks, impressions, search, and so on. Okay, this is how your like this is the log file that we will be getting daily. So what our team will be doing is they will be running a MR job in order to get what is the page view for a particular country and for a particular user. Okay, so what they will do is they will run a map mapper. So they will be having some GB of data. Okay, so consider this is your raw data. So your raw data is nothing but it is a this is how your format of your raw data will be. So uh, this is your raw data. So what they will do is they will run a MR job. Okay, so what they will do is their MR job, how they will query is for that particular user alone. Say for example, US site. For US site, okay, and they will be just specifying their queries like for US and for that particular site. Okay, what is the total number of PVs? That is, what is the total number of page views made? And they will just store this data in a, for, for permanent use, they will be storing it in a particular node. Okay, this is how it happens. Say, for example, this is uh, in the same MR job, uh, in the same MR job, they will just add one more query. For example, India. So, for India, for that particular site alone, how much page view is made? Okay. This is how it will be. Okay, so this will be a collection uh, like this one single MR job will do all this operation and it will give them the result. Okay, and this is a this PV is nothing but a collection of it is a collection of all these things, right? So this is a general MR job that they will be running. In case, if you want, this is a collection of all, all these counts. Okay, this is one type of MR that our team is running. 
So another thing is they want a unique count. Unique count in the sense is, for example, we all know that a session is of 30 minutes, right? Say for example, if the user is having his session as 30 minutes. In 30 minutes, if he has viewed a particular page for 4 times, here in page view it will be showing as 4. But in case of unique count, when you use the session ID and if you are going to just uh, make another MR job, the result will be just 1, right? Because for that session ID alone, for each and every session you will be generating, it will be keep on generating a session ID. So for that particular session alone, the count will be 1. So we need another MR job to do this, right? So what our team is doing is, they will be running another MR job. This is MR job 1 and this is MR job 2, okay? So in this MR job, how they will query is, for US, for this site name, plus what they will do is, they will add the session ID key. All these are keyword based query, okay? They will add this keyword as a query and they will run another MR job. Okay, so this is how it is done. So here, I, just for example, I'm just saying two sites. Yeah, okay, fine. We are having our, around like seven or eight sites. Okay, so think of for seven to eight sites, it has to go through like for example, consider this as a hundred GB of data. So for all the seven sites, the MR has to run, it has to process hundred GB of data, and it has to extract this particular data. Uh, our own desired result and it has to give. In case if they want the unique count, once this MR job is over, they will be running another MR job to get all these data, right? So, when you go for Spark streaming, the difference lies here. See, here your US plus site, okay? This and this both are common, right? Okay. The data that is present for this particular uh, for this particular context and this particular context are the same. Only thing is you are going to just again do another filtration. That is, you are going to just add a session ID with that, and you are going to take away the data. Okay, take away the count. Just you are going to just extract it. That is nothing but abstraction. You are just doing further abstraction. Abstraction is nothing but representing the essential data alone. And it will just leave out the other data. So you are further abstracting the data and you are just getting another desired result, right? So this and this both are the same. So what happens in Spark is you can just store the D streams in your RAM. Okay? So for example, uh, consider this D stream as US plus site D stream. Okay? What you can do is, so this has sufficient data from which you can calculate your unique count. Only thing is, you have to perform a suitable filtering operation on that. So filtering operation, we call it as transformation. So what you can do is using this particular D stream and what main thing is this this D stream will be stored in your RAM memory. Okay. okay. So that when you run this second MR job in your Hadoop environment, in the meantime, what you can do is you can just take this particular D stream as an input for your next filtering operation and you can just perform a filter transformation here. Just perform a filtering transformation over here and you can just obtain your US plus side plus your session ID. So this will be your required D stream. So you need not run the MR job again, that is from this 100 GB of raw data, you need not again just process the <coughs> this particular operation. The main advantage is, as I said, all your the RD, all your D streams are like 
lineage in nature. Lineage in the sense is like descending from your ancestor. For example, you will have your great grandfather, your grandfather, your father, and the son. The son knows who is his grandfather. Right? Mm -hmm. So similarly, this US plus side B stream knows from where it has been derived. Right? So it knows I'm like I am derived from this raw data. So it knows like what is the content of this raw data and how it has been derived and what is the transformation that is applied in order to get this US plus side. So it will be easy for it to just add this one more filter along with that to get your desired data. So this is how what happens in the background. Really? But adding a stream would uh, be required for another process, right? In case of filtering, it says if the thing no, is vice versa, it will be like adding. Not, it is not like adding. Since I have just made a plus mark, it is not like adding. Like it will be just all like querying based upon the keyword. Yeah, querying. Yeah. In, the, in the previous one, it had only the query data for the country code and the site size. Right. You know. it, it, it didn't have the time. It didn't have any kind of information regarding the session ID. Yeah, no. As I said, it will have a PV, right? Yeah, PV. So PV won't be a single column. Okay. PV will be like the summation of all these things. Even these data will be present. That's Clicks, fine. Impressions. That's, that's have the session ID. And search. And here you will have a session ID, right? Yeah. So till this one, what it will do is, uh, say for example, US. Uh, site name, for example, have it as ask. Okay, site name is ask. And for country is... Okay, how it is country here as US. So when it takes off this particular action alone, this, this, and all these things will be filtered out and it will be kept in that particular. It does, that, that doesn't have the session ID. Session ID, it won't, ha it won't be having a session ID, right? It doesn't have the information, right? It, it, it won't <laughs> be having the session ID information. In case, if you are mad, if the, if the, what is said is in vice versa process, it's possible. Yeah. No, like, <laughs> like what happens is it knows from where it has been taken. Yeah. Yeah, it knows the path they know. So it just the path they know. No, it knows its parent data. Yeah. Yeah. So when it knows its parent data, how your query will be, you will be just doing a comparison operation. Like it will take this D stream. When I uh, see there are many operations like, like how to get your D stream. So when I explain that, it will be easier for you. So what it will do is, it will take this particular D stream, and what it will do is, for example, it will compare with this, this entire D stream. Okay. Isn't that extra work? work? No, not like an extra work. Even here, you are doing an extra work, right? You you are just running again an MR job for the entire data, and you will be getting this, right? Here no, it is not. The process you said is okay. What we are suggesting is. If you do the US plus I plus session ID thing first and you can filter from that, it will be oh, that's what, that will be the uh, possible solution, right? Because already the all the three data is there. But with respect to session ID, you can filter the data for all uh, for US uh, for the country and the site area alone. See here what happens is US and site D stream will be there. Yeah. Okay. This is another D stream, right? Here, uh, like as you know that first your line data will be converted into another, another D stream, right? Okay. So your line D stream is a collection of all these things, right? Am I right? Mm -hmm. You all agree with that, yeah. right? So this is your line D stream. Okay. Okay. And this is your US plus side D stream. Mm -hmm. So when you apply a filter called filter transformation, you will be passing some arguments to that particular function. Okay. You will be already predefined filter operation okay. will be okay. there and you will be passing it. Oh, it. So what it will do is, it will just take out just these two things and a comparison will be made. That is when you make a functional call, a comparison will be made and then you will be getting out your desired result D stream. Mm -hmm. Simple, right? All your D streams will be existing. <laughs> ஒன்னோர்ங்க <laughs> 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 
I'll just have it. I'll just explain the window technique yeah, alone. Step. No, just that window technique alone will be very easier one, so that you can easily have, have it. Just how was the presentation? That is, that will be just a one slide. So there are many ways in which you can generate your D screen. Okay. So when you just uh, use that particular operation, it will be very yeah, easy for you. Why you can tell us all the site, country, site name, browser ID, session ID, everything is a map. Everything will be in a single line D screen, right? See, I don't get you. Not like single line D screen. See, in Hadoop we call it as blocks, right? Yeah. Data blocks. Similarly, what we are doing is we are going to divide it into D streams. Mm -hmm. But those blocks will be in a random manner. Right? It will be divided and it will be stored in a random manner, yeah, yeah, right? Okay. That is distributed uh, storage, okay? Mm -hmm. But here what we are having is we are having a resilient distributed data set. That is the word they have just added it, resilient. So it is just a stream. So, this is so it has a proper order. This is not distributed. Yeah, no, that is a difference. I'll just also let you know in further sessions, I'll just let you know how it differs from the distributed data set and RDB. Distributed shared memory. Hadoop is distributed shared yeah, memory, yeah. right? And this is entirely different. From, RDD is entirely different from distributed shared memory. I'll let you know how it exactly differs. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, in the forthcoming sessions, I'll let you know the exact the difference. In memory. Yeah, in that memory. is in memory storage, like RDDs. As soon as you generate your RDDs, you can just make the RDD to reside in your RAM. So what happens is here, even this one and this one resides in your RAM memory. So only thing is you need to just perform a filter operation on the data that resides in your RAM memory. So it will be easy for you to get your result. Okay. So here the window operation. So here this is how the window. Like window in the sense is your input data. Consider your input line of data. Okay. Line. This is your raw input. Okay. So what you can do is your raw input will be divided into RDDs as I said, okay? So what happens over here is, you will have, like, it will be first splitted into RDDs, right? And you can have some window. So what the window will do is, you can specify two parameters for that. That is window size. That is the amount of RDD, that is the number of RDDs that the window must cover, okay? So you know how your data will be. That is, you know how your log file will be. So it can either be like, say for example, if it is going to be a tab separator or a comma separator, you can just define how your window should be and how it should be like separated. Okay? So your window will be of this size, your window size. And then you can also decide since it is a live streaming of data, your window keep should keep moving, right? It needs to continuous your data streams in a regular basis, regular time intervals. So on what basis your window should slide, your slide interval. Your slide interval, say for example, if it is like two D streams per, uh, two D streams, your window will be sliding like this. This will be your new window. And then again, this will be your, this is your new window, right? So after two slides, it will go here. Okay, this is window one, two and three. So base, this is one RDD. Now, sorry, this is one D stream, right? Now, you have generated a D stream. So how it will be is like, for this window, you will be having a D stream like this, and for this window, you will be having another D stream, and similarly for this window, you will be having this D stream. So say for example, you can call it as a window D stream. So this is one way of generating your D stream. Similarly, there are many procedures like through which you can generate your D streams based upon your own needs and how you are going to process it. So everything here is customizable. So you can customize it and you can use it. So since your D stream is entirely customizable, your D stream is nothing but your collection of RDDs. So indirectly you are customizing how your RDD should be. You are going to perform all your operations, that is your actions, right? As I said, collect is one kind of operation that you are going to perform. Collect in the sense is the result will be stored. Okay. So similarly, all your operations you are going to perform on this particular RDD alone. So indirectly you are customizing how your RDD should be. So that is how you are getting your desired result out of this. Okay. So this is just an overview and a small comparison and you can just imagine how much 
time that you people can save out of this. See, for this alone, you need to run another MR job for which it needs to go back to your memory and it has to just use all this 100 GB of data and it needs to reprocess it and then you need to get your result. But here is, you are just going to access two, uh, two data sets that is available in your RAM memory and only thing is you are going to make a functional call based upon this filter requirement. You are just going to write a particular just, uh, similarly you need to, anyway, you are, over here you need to write an MR code, right? And here you can just you need to specify your filter and how the filter should be. That's it. Your job is done. Using the RAM data, it will do everything. So what we have planned is like, uh, we need to just make further analysis of like, in depth, like in further sessions, we'll be letting you know like, how the RDDs are exactly generated and what are the ways in which you can store the RDDs. Okay, as I said, like your RDDs will be keep on storing in your RAM memory. Okay, so what happens when your RAM memory gets overflow? So we will let you know in further sessions like what, what happens to the additional data that is accumulated into your RAM memory. Okay. Thank you. So it is the shared memory on the company opposite. Distributed shared memory is used. Under the distributed shared memory is used. So, that is the complete opposite. RDD. So, this is the in memory storage. So, in between the store, like, we process when you are over data, we have to switch. Add the further processing, and the data will be used. Process. Okay, but. I mean, all data RAM but process RAM Like, data RAM and the data lineage process So, for example, fourth level of the data So, naturally, like, that's why we process the data So, that's why we the entire data we have you can use the filter to filter the data. So, you can use the RAM memory. Okay, intermediate outputs are the RAM memory. Okay, but eviction is the next step. Every store is the every split. There are many processes. D-stream or data stream? Like D-stream or data stream? D-stream is the data stream. Data stream is the data stream. Data or dynamic? Discrete types. Hmm? Actually, a word is like a discrete. 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 So it's discrete. like every block is a like yeah. a spec. They have a specified. Like, like all the time. Like all the time. Like all the time. They are just the same. No, I mean, what you are mentioning as a window contains three blocks. So it is a 64 MB block. Yeah. So all the three blocks have been like a. Here they have been. Like no, it's a 64 MB block. Say, <laughs> okay. It's a block. ஏன்னாலும்ிருக்குறதுக்குறதுக்குறதுக்குறதுக்குறதுக்குறதுக்குறதுக்குறதுக்குறதுக்குறதுக்குறதுக்குறதுக்குறதுக்குறதுக்கு